Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello dear learners, welcome to this online course on legal language, legal including general English. This is lecture number 9 and I am Dr. Divya Gupta, an assistant professor at GLA University, Matra. Today we are going to study the phonetic scripts. Now you might be thinking about what is the relevance of learning this lecture or going through this lecture. When it comes to phonetics, remember that your exact pronunciation matters a lot when there is a legal writing or legal discourse because it matters a lot whatever you are speaking and especially talking about legal terminologies, especially talking about legal words, legal maxims, phrases, yes of course they play a pivotal role. For your kind information I would like to tell you that international phonetics alphabet has actually like in the 19th century has prescribed format or uh, received pronunciations about certain uh, syllables. Whatever we speak, how are we going to speak them? What would be the pronunciation? There are basic units on which we understand these things, right? The smallest unit is syllable. The smallest unit is syllable. From the comparison, from the compilation of all those syllables, we create words and from those words basically we learn where to put stress and where not to put stress, which are stressed and which are unstressed syllables. Further, we will talk about certain other aspects of syllables also. We have phonemes, the smallest unit, phonemes, in this case phonemes are transcribed in a different manner and on the whole if I talk about this there are 44 speech sounds. Till now you might be knowing about 26 letters, 26 alphabets right but when it comes to phonetic transcription believe me there are sounds, speech sounds and there are 44 speech sounds. Out of those 44 speech sounds 20 are vowels. 20 are vowels and 24 are consonant sounds. So remember we are not talking about A, E, I, O, U, they are different. I am talking about speech sounds that is vowels and consonants. In a combination of 20 plus 24 they make 44 speech sounds. So with this note I would like to take you to this particular lecture where I would definitely give you some more information about phonetic transcriptions and how these phonetic transcriptions play an important role when it comes to legal jurisdiction. So let's move up to the learning outcomes. What are the learning outcomes that you people are going to imbibe after going through this lecture? Yes, so let's focus you would be able to acquire, you would be able to acquire proficiency in modern transcription. Yes, in phonetic transcription, all of you would be excellent enough to know more and more about them. Further, you would be able to enhance legal vocabulary pronunciation, which is again a very important part, right? For example, if I say alma mater, for example, I say other words, there are few more legal maxims, many, so and so forth, you can say. So you would be able to learn about their pronunciation. And even testimonies and recordings also, in those testimonies and recordings, these things play an important role. So after that, you would be able to increase communication precision. Yes, by using the exact pronunciation, you would be able to grasp that precision aspect also, to write in a very concise and precise manner. Further, in this flow, you would be able to develop effective communication skills in legal practice because your good communication depends on your good pronunciation and your good pronunciation actually depends on the knowledge of phonetic transcriptions. 
what is the laid pattern of pronunciation by IPA. So, in that condition this is your this is uh, the point where you are going to grow. Then you would be able to understand the dialectical variations. Yes, of course, somebody who is living in Bengal or somebody who is living in Assam, maybe their, their, uh, their pronunciation would differ because of their dialectical difference, because of their cultural variations. So, you would see that how these variations take place. After this lecture, yes, of course, then through review skills, learn review skills of legal documents. No, on the basis of that phonetic transcription, you will learn about the stress and intonations also. And you would see that according to the behavior, according to command, request, order, the stress also changes and you would learn all these aspects. Further, we are going to learn the importance, need and role of cross-cultural communication. Cross-cultural communication means like you would be able to acquire the skill of talking with someone or interacting with someone from different cultures, from cultural, different cultural background. Then learn standard legal terminologies that we have already discussed, you would be able to learn all these things. So, with this note we are going to take you, I am going to take you to the content list, what are the things that we are going to cover in this lecture. So, we are going to discuss about phonetic transcription first of all. Phonetic transcriptions are there and I uh, will tell you that the smallest unit is syllable, phoneme. So, these are the things that you have to understand. Further, use of phonetic transcriptions, you would learn about them. Then, role in legal proceedings, like what is the role of phonetic transcription in legal proceedings, that you will see. The different variations, dialectical changes, cross-cultural communication, all these things will take place. IPA symbols, if they are IPA symbols are there, I told you IPA stands for International International Phonetic Alphabet, right? That is International Phonetic Alphabet. Now, in this term, it is your uh, like understanding of symbols, vowels and consonants. In this we have, I told you as I described it earlier, 20 vowels and 24 consonant sounds, speech sounds, right. So, further we are going to deal with results because these phonetic transcriptions are going to help you to resolve the languages and communication disputes, whatever like the disputes are or quarrel are you can say or maybe some case or some argument is going on. Yes, this phonetic transcription will help out people to resolve all these type of issues. Maybe sometimes due to communication error or because of misunderstanding caused by the pronunciation, that uh, the, the queries or the disputes could be resolved very easily. Further, you can definitely discuss about the testimonials and te recordings because yes, phonetic transcription plays a very important role in all these aspects. So, with this note, I am going to take you to the right where you would understand about phonetic transcriptions and basically in order to understand that phonetic transcription, you have to understand that there are 44 speech sounds on the whole. There are 44 speech sounds and in these speech sounds, you have to understand they are led by IPA and received pronunciation RP. So, this is again a very important part where you have to concentrate, focus. So, with this note, let us move up to the next slide that is introduction. What are, what you mean by phonetic transcription? Phonetic transcription is a system of writing the or writing that represents the sounds of English. So, if I say, if I take up this word, if I inscribe this word, transcribe particularly, like what are you going to speak this word? What is the sound that will be produced? P, P. And if I talk about the other sounds, for example, look at this. Which type of sound does it create? It will create CH, CH. That will form up the word church, church, right. So, remember you must know about the sounds that are coming. 
we are not considered we are not focusing on the words on the letters rather we are focusing on the sounds that they are creating so this is what we are going to learn here phonetics is or transcription is a system of or is a system to understand the sound of the writings the sound of the words that are coming up so let's come up with that phonetic transcription is a system of writing represent the sound of speech in visual form second it is a way to capture and symbolize individual speech sounds or phonemes that i've told you the smallest unit phonemes of a language making it easier to study analyze the pronunciation of words and sentences yes of course whatever the words and sentences are you will analyze their meaning further you would be able to understand the phonetic transcription which is commonly used in linguistics in linguistics where we will study about language learning language learning and speech pathology so these are very important elements for judging for suspecting for coming up with the truth authentication sometimes uh, whenever there is a kind of victim you have the proof suppose witness evidence how are you going to check in that condition we have some uh, devices forensic devices you can say which check that whether this person is speaking truth or not so in that condition these there are there are different laboratories also where you can definitely judge a person from his tone from his speech from his pronunciation so yes of course my dear learners this is again to uh, is going to be a very interesting topic for all of you to learn yes further we are going to deal with ipa international phonetic alphabet which is the most widely used system for phonetic transcription as i told you in my previous uh, slide also that phonetic alphabet international phonetic alphabet is the most widely used phonetic transcription system then we have it provides set of symbols as if like what i used over here ch sound right so this is very uh, very clearly indicating that i'm talking about ch ch sound symbols are given by ipa and each representing a specific speech sound or phoneme and it includes symbols for consonants vowels and other phonetic features such as stress and intonation let me tell you one more thing uh, and using this particular blank slide i would like to tell you this that when it comes to consonant and vowel right in these cases consonant sounds are how many 24 vowels are 20 now these vowels are also further divided into two categories now which are these two categories one is monophthongs and monophthongs and the other one is diphthongs diphthongs right so when it comes to monophthongs and diphthongs there are eight monophthongs and 12 diphthongs in that condition oh so yes i am going to use the uh, different uh, color scale so that it would be much clearer for you to understand so in that condition how many monophthongs are there there are 12 monophthongs and 8 diphthongs so you must remember that this is the important side where you have to be very much careful yes so this is the important thing that you have to understand consonant and vowel sound vowel sound now we are going to talk about the difference of their occurrence when we say that this one is this particular set of sounds they are known as consonants and this particular set of sounds is known as vowel sound so what is the difference between them why have we uh, like kept them in different sectors in different boxes is there any kind of difference of utterance yes of course we call the all those sounds as consonant sounds whenever the sound which is produced from your esophagus and travels from your uvula and come out at that time when the speech sounds are created uh, there is a stricture or a barrier when we create the consonant sounds right so whenever we create or generate any consonant sound 
there is a stricture caused either by your teeth or by your tongue, by your lip, sometimes upper palate, could be anything. So, this is your understanding. Whenever I am speaking some words, they will certainly be produced with a stricture or barrier. Barrier. The air will not flow easily from your from your esophagus till the outside. For example, if I say if I say ma, ma, if you are going to concentrate this sound and listen to it very carefully, ma, both my lips come together to form up this sound and in that condition the flow of that air pushes from esophagus and, and, and it, it has been restricted over here by the lips, understood by both the lips, upper lip and the lower lip. Now in this condition what does it happen? Ma, ma. Ma. Is it clear? So, ma sound is actually your consonant sound. Have I made myself very clear my dear learners? Because in this condition only you would be able to understand and differentiate the consonant sounds and vowel sounds. And when you speak the vowel sounds, you will not observe any kind of difference, any kind of like uh, barrier or stricture in the flow of the air air stream mechanism will flow freely, will, will be without any stricture. For example, if I say ah, if I say ah, there is no stricture while that air flows from my esophagus and travels through my mouth and there is no stricture ah, ooh. So, there is no stricture therefore, this is as been categorized in vowel sound. And the other ones are in consonant sounds. Got the difference everyone? So, they are consonants and vowels. That makes the difference. Vowel sounds, they do not have any barrier or stricture while producing a sound. Whereas, consonant category, they will certainly have the stricture, stricture or barrier in the middle of it. Right? So, we have in the same way many sounds like labios, labiodental sound, Sometimes we have dental sound, sometimes we have alveolar sound, there are many. Let me tell you few more like okay, if I say glottal, glottal sound, in this glottal sound we have h, then we have velar sound, velar sound, this has ang, ang, k. G, many others. Then we have bilabial sound that I told you when two lips come together, two lips come together, bilabial sound. In this, I told you P, B, M. Since it is a transcription, therefore, it will be written in two slash, right. Then we have after bilabial, we have labiodental, we have labiodental sound. In this we have labiodental that means lower lip or and teeth will combine together to form up a new sound. Then we have dental, both the teeth will come together to form up a new one, right. Then we have alveolar sound alveolar sound. In this alveolo, alveolar sound we have n, we have t, we have d, s, z. Last but not the least palatal sound, palatal sound, palatal sound will sh, sh. Z, ch, j, y. So, these are few types of sounds that we have to understand. Have you understood the difference basically? Whenever we utter a word, the whole articulatory system works out. 
our organs of speech they play a very important role. So, whatever you have understood till now there are there are two types of speech sounds vowels and consonants. Vowels are 20 and consonants are 24. The reasons why they are categorized into two parts because vowels have no stricture when the air flows from their mouth and consonants yes of course there is a barrier or stricture when that sound comes out understood further we can talk about something where we have understood this aspect that how these because these sounds are created on the basis of place of articulation place of articulation remember whenever we are going to talk about place of articulation then we can come up with all these glottal sounds alveolar sound velar sound bilabial sound labiodental sound dental sound many more like this clear so place of articulation right and when it comes to monophthongs and diphthongs diphthongs is a combination of two sounds two vowel sounds you know so for example if i say ear if you say ear r is silent always ear so, in that case e a uh, I am not talking about the about the hidden or you can say some sounds which you cannot hear silent words I am not talking about silent sounds. So, when you say ear r is silent in this remember r is silent. So, this is ear two vowel sounds together combined together to form up diphthongs clear understood if I say poor now in this condition what is again two sounds are combined together two vowel sounds are combined together right so these are diphthongs so for all the students who are sitting here for uh, who are there to understand the phonetic transcription this is a most important thing to understand that vowel sounds and consonant sounds amalgamate together to form up new words and the pronunciation also matters or changes when the sounds change whether they are monophthongs or diphthongs. So, with this note I am going to take you to the next slide where we will discuss that what is the utility of learning all these things for all the students who are from legal background. So, we are going to move up to the next slide where Yes, we have already understood this aspect. These symbols are always there consistent and precise manner. So, let us move up to the uses of phonetic transcription. This is the most important side, right. So, the uses of phonetic transcription is when it comes to this side, you have to understand that in linguistics, linguistics is the art of learning language, art of uh, language description or you can say language as a science you cannot actually speak anything without that scientific knowledge. So, linguistics is something use phonetic transcription to document and analyze the sounds of different languages yes and many research works are also done research works are also done. I would like to quote professor Panchanan Mohanty who is a renowned Panchanan Mohanty who is a renowned uh, like linguistic linguist who has really done researches worldwide and he is that kind of figure who has brought about certain descriptions of tribal languages also the research work of tribal languages. So, remember that try to try to come up with his books also focus on, on uh, all the transcriptions that he has given because he has given the comparative study of two languages, two dialects sometimes tribal language and he has set up some like he is right now in Nalanda University and uh, working there as a distinguished uh, lecturer, le distinguished professor. But I must really appreciate that we have some jewels over here who can definitely provide some kind of insight to all of us. So, yes of course, I would like to refer him for this and in this case many researches have been done on the speech sounds. Further helping them understand how sounds are produced, I told you how sounds are produced, I told you that whenever we talk about the sounds remember that let me come up to the uh, vacant slide so that I can explain you in a much better manner. So, when it comes to sounds uh, remember that 
these sounds can definitely be transformed or checked on basis of three things. What are these three things? Place of articulation. What is the place of articulation? First of all, you must know about the place of articulation. Second, whether it is the voicing particularly. What is about voicing? Whether it is a voiced sound or voiceless, voiceless sound. Third, you must actually know about this when it comes to manner of articulation, manner of articulation. So, these things play a very important role when it comes to sounds, speech sounds. Remember, whenever it is uh, on the basis of that speech sounds, how are you going to check that voicing? When you touch this part, you will certainly feel that there is a buzzing sound. When while creating some words, if they are buzzing, if your esophagus, there is a buzzingness, you can hear it over here in your neck. That clearly indicates that this one is a voiced sound. Where you can speak the word without that kind of buzzing sound, that is voiceless. Clear? So, yes, of course, this is your task for the day that you can definitely check several speech sounds whether they are voiced or they are voiceless. So, with this note, we can move further and I would like to describe that uses of phonetic transcription as if I was telling you about the whole thing. Now, I would like to ask you one more thing that how language learning plays an important role. Yes, you have learnt about linguistics. Now, it comes to language learning. Phonetic transcription is used in language textbooks and dictionaries. You might have seen in dictionaries also there is phonetic transcription. Right, so there is phonetic transcription and in this condition you can definitely understand that how these words will be pronounced actually, right. So that like it would not be a prolonged one or a compact one. So, it must have the long vowel, maybe sometimes we have a long vowel, sometimes a short vowel, it depends on stress also. So, that in my next lecture, I would be describing about that stress and intonation, which plays an important role. But uh, for now, you should understand this trans, uh, phonetic transcription. To help learners understand and reproduce the correct pronunciation of words. Now, when it comes to this word, Many students will speak it as plagiarism, as plagiarism, right? But when it comes to the exact received pronunciation, that will be plagi j j plagiarism, right? Plagiarism. So this is the difference of two words when it pronounced, they are pronounced correctly or incorrectly. This is all about IPA. This is all about received pronunciation that we check the exact pronunciation of any speech sound, of any word. So, with this note, we can move further to speech pathology. Yes, of course, we have speech pathologies available where several research works are also done and several crimes are also detected. The evidence are also detected on the basis of those speech pathologies. Speech therapist, we have speech therapist and pathologist use phonetic transcription to access, to assess and diagnose speech disorders, track progress in therapy and develop tailored treatment plans for individuals with speech difficulties. So, this is something really very important where you would judge how these things are like, like as if we have doctor's clinic, pathologies are there where testings are done. Maybe sometimes we uh, check our hemoglobin, WBC test or, or etc, etc, so many tests are done. Now, in the same manner, speech pathology also plays a very important role where this phonetic transcription, the, the pathologist or therapist, they use phonetic transcription to access, to assess the, assess and diagnose the people, their speech sounds, their tone, their vocabulary, everything would be judged. Then further we have communication research. Of course, as I referred Professor Panchanan Mohantri, he, ha, he is a he is a huge or we can say worldwide uh, linguistic figure who actually stands next to uh, like uh, yes of course we can say Indian linguists who is worldwide acclaimed. So, researchers studying speech and communication use phonetic transcriptions 
to analyze speech patterns, study accents, dialects and investigate various aspects of spoken language, right? Various aspects of spoken language, how these words are have, have evolved, how, uh, what is the origin and etymological study of that word. So, all these things come in this category of phonetic transcription. We have semantics study, metaphorical study, we have several other sciences of uh, learning or studying these words. So, with this note, we will move further to the role of phonetic transcriptions in legal proceedings. When it comes to legal proceedings, since we all are from legal background, you all are from legal background, you would learn, you would uh, actually, uh, you all are waiting to see the connection with legal proceedings. You might have seen various cases, various criminal laws, various criminal cases which were resolved by using these uh, tactics of phonetic transcription. So, in this condition, you must know that, that court transcripts. In this condition, the court proceedings are a stenographer or transcriptionist may use phonetic transcription to create a written record of what is said during the trial or hearing. So, whatever you speak, the tone, your tone will be measured, your vocabulary will be checked, your facial expressions, your body language, everything will be included in that condition. You would learn all those things. So, especially when there is, uh, there are issues related to pronunciation, accents or difficult to understand speech sounds are there. Recording witness testimonies, obviously we have recordings uh, of witness who are the witness basically. So, in that we can use those testimonies again with that. So, you can say that when a witness gives testimony, their words may transcribe phonetically. They are transcribed phonetically to preserve the exact pronunciation and what is the meaning of that word, right? So, statement, interpretation of their statement hinges or the precise wording delivery. This is again a very important point. Forensic sciences we have, forensic phonetics we have. We, you might have seen several um, criminal records, several uh, uh, like uh, cases also where on the basis of these uh, forensic laboratories and uh, phonetic sciences, we were able to resolve certain things, certain issues, certain uh, disputes. So, phonetic transcription may be employed in forensic uh, phonetics to analyze voice recordings. Many times nowadays, we have CCTV cameras, cameras available. Now, in this CCTV cameras, what is the matter? Like, we have recordings visual and audio. So, in that video and audio recordings, we actually observe each and everything and invoice recognition, speaker identification such as criminal investigations are done on the basis of these forensic uh, phonetics. Further, we took, uh, we are going to talk about transcription of recorded evidence. Whatever we have recorded, we are going to discuss about all those things. And we are, uh, many times the videos are played in the, uh, in the, in the courtroom to know about the difference of their expressions. So, transcription of recorded uh, evidence is also very important because they are phonetic transcription can help transcribe and understand the content of these recordings. In that content, we can talk about the background noise, multiple speakers, all these things matter a lot. You discuss about these transcriptions, these recorded things, evidence, right? So, you must know that whatever we are having as a record on CCTV cameras, sometimes, sometimes on different uh, devices, maybe sometimes on mobile, recorder we have. So, all those the, these evidences could be later used by these uh, like phonetic transcriptions and could be rectified, could be detected on the basis of this. Further documenting pronunciation disputes. If we have some kind of dispute based on the communication error, communication error sometimes like uh, interaction error or pronunciation error that will be resolved on the basis of phonetic transcription. In legal disputes involving pronunciation issues or misunderstanding that I told you, if somebody actually speaks about some different language, 
for example if i say if i take up the example of bhai right this is the normal example that i'm trying to give you in uh, gujarat that is different the meaning is different if i go to mumbai the meaning changes and if i move to the up side or maybe sometimes to uttar pradesh side the meaning will certainly change here it is brother here it is guju bhai sometimes sometimes mumbai uh, there is a person who is involved in violent uh, activities so basically i'm not talking about only this term many other words are there in different dialects in different languages according to their culture according to their background they have different kind of words which the meanings of them those words are different in various parts okay so you must know that how these words changes the meaning changes therefore it creates misunderstanding due to language differences and accents phonetic transcription can be used to clarify and resolve the problems so with this we are going to move to the further record where ipa symbol and consonant sounds are there so i'm going to take you to several uh, consonants although we have discussed it earlier also but i would like to show you this particular thing p p sound p b top top can you see can you put finger on your throat and just see whether it is voiced d d k g go fish van labiodental v your lower lip and your upper teeth is joining together to form up this word v v are you understanding this aspect alveolar sound sit sit s sound further zoo voiced you can see your throat here it is it is actually vibrating you can see the buzzing sound zoo zoo right so that is alveolar fricative sound sh ship ship j measure measure then hat hat mat m bilabial look at this when i produce m sound your both lips are upper lip and uh, lower lip are joining together to form with a uh, with a wind air mechanism when it flows out from that what happens m m n n this is alveolar sound n sing ang ang ng ng so therefore this sound voiced velar sound nasal l y palatal sound i have already discussed that how are we going to discuss the voiced palatal glide sometimes v can you see this thing v see this it is buzzing voiced v v your lower lip and teeth upper tip teeth ridge is touching v v so this is actually la voiced labial glide further we shall move towards the next vowel sounds where we'll see that how these words are used how these syllables or the, these speech sounds are actually used so now let's talk about e b then a b b then we have pet at bat 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 that is a prolonged one bat this is near open front unrounded vowel sound u boot u prolonged one so close back rounded vowel sound u this one u u book book u so this is can you see the difference between these two boot u prolonged one whereas book that is lower at a lower pace then o boat 
boat bought bought right this is the difference bought this is boat then caught ought caught so these are few examples of consonants and vowel sounds over here then further we'll move towards the next one where we are going to resolve that how phonetic transcriptions actually tries to try to resolve the language and pronunciation disputes because this is the most important point where the actually all the quarrel all the criminal acts all the uh, like uh, disputes occur how because because of your tongue right because of your words because of your language this is the most important you can say the reason of all the crime that are committed because whenever you speak wrong obviously that would repair that this is a repercussion of all those things so how this phonetic transcription helps in resolving the disputes that are occurred on the basis of pronunciation so now let's talk about transcribing testimonials and recording in the future lecture in the future slides i would like to describe what are testimonies what are recordings also so that you would be able to understand each and every aspect of uh, legal uh, documentation so testimonies are of evidence witness basically so let's see in a transcribing part ipa in transcripts in some cases especially when there are disputes recording regarding the pronunciation or clarity of spoken words in legal testimonies whenever there are legal testimonies and there are uh, some mispronunciation sometimes for example court transcripts may use ipa symbols to accurately capture the pronunciation of specific words that i told you ipa symbols international phonetics alphabet and they this can help ensure that spoken words are transcribed accurately accurately correct then speaker identification voice analysis then we have certain devices which when which can easily detect that this person okay this is divya gupta's voice this is not divya gupta's voice this is of xyz this is of abc so there are few devices also with which you can identify whether this voice belongs to her or not so speaker identification and voice analysis in this we have phonetics expert testimony we have entire team of uh, experts who actually come up with those devices where voice identification is a critical factor that is criminal investigations so we have voice identifications and criminal factors a phonetics expert who is knowledgeable about the ipa may be called upon to analyze voice recordings and provide expert testimony they may use the ipa to describe specific speech features so the task for the day is today you are go you all are going to come up with or just find out few more cases you can talk about any case law if you want you can talk about uh, about any case law maybe some landmark cases or recent case search on your own okay search on your own that which case which case resolved which case was resolved on the basis of this speaker identification and voice analysis behavior or voice analysis uh, like uh, by using this phonetic transcription so this is your task everyone today you all are going to find out that which are the cases you can say maybe the landmark case or case laws or any kind of like recent uh, cases which were resolved which were resolved on the basis of using these phonetic transcriptions yes so i know that in my next lecture all of you would be would uh, be ready with the answers also so with this note we are going to move further to the next side that it could definitely clarify pronunciation disputes if somebody has spoken in a different manner thinking it to be to be a different uh, word yes so reference to rp rp is what received pronunciation received pronunciation okay so reference to rp in cases where pronunciation disputes arises lawyers or experts might refer to rp as a reference point for british english pronunciation it could be relevant if for example the pronunciation of a specific word is central to a legal argument or case so 
this received pronunciation will definitely guide you. All the learners, all these people who are sitting in front and attending this particular lecture, they you should know that through received pronunciation, anybody's pronunciation could be checked and verified on the basis of British English pronunciation, right? So, and even in dictionaries also you might have seen that there is a difference between two uh, explanations, two pronunciations, if it is a Latin pronunciation, a British uh, or is, is it an American. So, it depends, it depends, even the pronunciation also changes, okay. So, this is something, uh, yes, different, okay. How will you pronounce this word? I have seen, I've seen many people calling it as harbringer, harbringer, using g as g, g sound, but the actual pronunciation is harbringer, harbringer, as if we have ginger, remember, er, g plus er will always in a maximum cases except few exceptions, we pronounce it as G E R, we, we spell it as G E R and call it as J, Jar, Jar, okay. So, Ginger, Harbinger, don't kill the Harbring, don't kill the Harbinger, right. So, remember this is the most important thing. Further, I would like to explain you what are testimonies and what are recordings. Because these are very much important and in testimonies only we learn these phonetic transcriptions, the utility of judging anybody's sound and uh, finding the evidence, calculating the authenticity of anybody on the basis of those pronunciations, received pronunciations. Yes, of course, you would be able to understand. So, let us discuss about testimonies and recordings. Testimonies, let us so, talk about types of testimonies. First one is eyewitness, eyewitness testimonies, one who has actually witnessed the whole crime, the whole crime scene, statements provided by individuals who personally observed or witnessed events related to the case, that is eyewitness testimonies. Expert testimonies, statements provided by experts in the particular field, for example, forensic experts, medical professionals or linguistics, for example, like the uh, in criminal cases, whenever the murder is there, post-mortem is the ultimate thing where the dead body, where the victim is actually been sent and then the entire uh, post-mortem is done and then further the dead body is uh, like everything is detected on the basis of their guidelines and parameters. So, we have forensic experts in that condition who offer their specialized knowledge and opinions relevant to the case. So, the first one is eyewitness testimony. Second one is one who is the expert in this field, sometimes forensic experts, sometimes you can talk about medical professionals, could be anyone. Third one is party testimonial, party testimonial statement means given by the parties directly involved in the case, for example, plaintiffs and defendants. So, one party is plaintiff who is actually accusing, who is actually who has filed a case against defendant, so two parties, so there could be the testimonies, party testimonies of the uh, uh, party testimonies who give these statements. And last we have character testimonies, character testimonies, statements that speak to the character and reputation of individuals involved in the case, statements that speak, that speak to the character and basically talks about the reputation of that character, remember. So, this is what testimonials are. So, there are four types of testimonials that we have understood. The first one is eyewitness testimonial, second one is expert testimonial, third one is party testimonial and fourth one character testimonial. Have you understood this aspect? So, further they are evidence and further we are going to take you to the purpose. What is the use of this, uh, these testimonies? Testimony serves as a victim, as, as a uh, you can say proof or uh, you can say evidence, means of presenting evidence, information to the court and judge and jury. They can help to establish facts, corroborate, challenge other evidences, etc. and recording testimonials. So, further, how are we going to record testimonials? They are often re recorded verbatim. 
verbatim either through court stenographers either they do it court stenographers taking notes sometimes by audio or video recording sometimes by audio or by audio video recording we actually go through all those things and other times yes of course some written record is actually provided in the uh, in the in the court itself where you can definitely get a deal with all those uh, recordings so documentations can be present for future reference further we come up to the recordings part the last one was the previous one was testimonies now this one is recordings now in this recordings you must know that what are recordings recordings refer to audio or video recordings of events and conversation basically that action like whatever action has been taken like it all has been recorded in step by step in a chronological manner so that is called recording sometimes visual sometimes auditory audi uh, audio so audio video recordings that i have already told you maybe sometimes on phone sometimes security camera footage cctv that i told you baby one camera then surveillance footage many many other sources are there so what are the types of recording audio and video that i have already told you that is a conversation interview sometimes audio based evidences are also there in this case we have video recordings available with us and uh, what are these video recordings obviously i told you that whenever the camera is available video recordings for example surveillance footage is there body cameras are there sometimes we attach camera uh, on our like uh, sometimes over here or maybe sometimes in your pen so for collecting the data yes of course people carry those cameras these minute cameras hidden cameras for sting operations also you might have seen these things so they are used for recording purpose then what is the purpose of these recordings obviously to highlight the crime to find out the logics and reason to find out the evidence of the crime these recordings are used so they cannot corroborate or contradict testimonies and other evidence helping to establish truth and context of the situation so whatever the situation is it is going to record each and everything background sometimes sometimes it will take you talk uh, uh, tell you about the nearby people who were there sometimes it will tell you about the sounds that are coming from far off distance and it will always tell you about the time also at which the whole thing took place so many things are there in recording part which helps in transcription phonetic transcription because speech matters a lot speech sounds matter a lot then we have authentication what are these authentications that it's crucial to establish the authenticity and integrity of recordings because we have forensic experts also who judge the validity of these things we have we have other experts sometimes doctors sometimes we have police officers who actually judge the authenticity of that recordings of those recordings yes so it hasn't been tampered tampered is not it has not been like violated or maybe changed maybe manipulated accordingly whether the truth was manipulated or changed or maybe altered in such a manner so this is what authentication it checks the authenticity of all these things last last but not the least we are going to discuss the conclusion how and what are the things that we have uh, been doing till now we have learned that how these phonetic transcriptions play an important role in legal proceedings legal proceedings for case laws for all these kinds of authenticity to check the authenticity of anything you must know that the goal of all the cases the legal context that we are going to deal with is to find the truth and whenever the truth search for truth is there you must know that there has to be a kind of reason where we can vent out we can actually find out search the logics the reasons behind the uh, behind the crime and yes phonetic transcription can definitely provide you the sources 
through testimonies, through recordings and through different other reasons where you can definitely resolve all those issues which have aroused because of these uh, sometimes misconception, misunderstanding, mispronunciation of the words. So, yes of course, throughout this lecture, this lecture we have understood what is phonetic transcription, we have learnt about vowel sound and consonant sounds, we have clearly understood that how these sounds are created on the basis of place of articulation, place of uh, then manner of articulation and whether they are voiced or unvoiced sound, voiceless sound. We have understood that these things are really very important and when it comes to goal, remember the goal of any legal officer is to find the truth and in that condition phonetic transcription plays an integral and pivotal role. There are numerous cases where phonetic transcription, forensic sciences and all these verbal skills have played an integral role. So, let us talk about this conclusion. The goal in legal context is ensure the accuracy, clarity in documenting spoken language which can be crucial for the fair administration of justice. Yes, this is really very true. These people like whenever we talk about the case laws which are the hearings, court hearings, most of the time people are worried about the evidences. But you cannot actually temper those evidence, you cannot uh, temper those witnesses or those recordings and testimonies because they are verified, authentic. So, yes of course, the spoken language to take the crucial and fair administration of justice. Further, in some cases, expert phoneticians or linguists may be called upon to provide their analysis and expertise on matters related to speech and pronunciation. So, here we have certain measures where we call forensic expert, we call doctors, medical officers, we call police officers also to judge the scenario and to find out the logics behind them. So, in this condition talking about speech and pronunciation, if they belong to different dialect, if they belong to different cultural background, yes of course these things are important. Then IPA that is again I would like to tell you that international, international phonetic alphabet fix up the pronunciation of anything. Also include symbols for diphthongs, for example, I in ride, right, I, triphthongs and various other symbols for specific articulatory features and diacrities, critics, diacritics that represent variations in pronunciation. So, finally, if you would be able to know more about the differences in pronunciation, I am 100 percent sure or pretty much sure about the successful resolving temperament of you people. Because with this phonetic transcription knowledge, you definitely be able to resolve all the disputes related to it. And then further, I would like to come up with certain references which I have uh, taken and uh, like uh, referred to, I would like to move up to those references side where I have referred about speech pronunciation, about speech sounds where uh, like English phonetics and phonology, a practical course for Cambridge University Press. Then we have uh, Leitch Post, Johnson K, a course on in phonetics, then uh, Wordsworth uh, Publishing. Further, we have elements of general phonetics, L. Dine Publishing come in company. Then I have referred to intonation of colloquial English because in the coming lectures also I would be talking about stress and intonation because stress and intonation also plays an integral role when you want to check the crime. Crime when we talk the want to check the criminal record sometimes. So, this is this is on the basis of which you are going to judge the authentication, sometimes the truth, difference between truth and lie. So, yes, intonation of colloquial English, you are going to search, you are going to find several other details in the next lecture. Then uh, further, I have already uh, used this understanding phonology, Rutledge. And in this condition, you must know that these things are really very important, kindly refer these books 
so as to get maximum knowledge about phonetic transcription because this has been a separate branch of uh, solving the legal issues. Then I have referred vowels and consonants, then uh, Willie Blackwell, then uh, I have referred to this uh, phonetics, the science of speech by Arnold and then further I have taken this uh, fundamental principles, problems in phonetics, Indiana University Press, then I have referred to Gimson's pronunciation of English, 8th edition Rutledge and last but not the least an introduction to phonetics and phonology which is again a very important one. So, with this note I would like to tell you my dear learners that without the knowledge of phonetic transcription all of you would be lacking behind because these things while validating the evidence and proof and witnesses these things would definitely fail if you would not perfect yourself for any kind of phonetic transcription or if you fail at this. So, keep learning, keep finding all those laws, all those you can say all the cases that are won, that are resolved on the basis of these phonetic transcriptions knowledge, maybe by referring to any forensic expert or many doctor, any, any uh, legal doctor, maybe sometimes uh, some police officer. So, judging, keeping it as a parameter you must know about them. So, thank you everyone, I am Dr. Divya Gupta, an assistant professor at GLA University signing off for now, wish you all the best for your bright future, thank you everyone.